And so we see in verses 1 and 2, we see forsaken. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear, and in the night season, and am not silent. Just the night before, less than 24 hours before, Jesus on the cross cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was in a garden up on the Mount of Olives, just east of Jerusalem. And there with His disciples, and it was in so much agony that He said to His three buddies, John and Peter and James, said, guys, Let's let's go a little bit farther away from everybody else. And would you pray with me? Man, I am so in anguish. My soul is tormented. Would you come and pray with me? He came and he said, you wait here and pray a little bit. I need to I need to get alone, but pray with me. And he goes a few steps on and he prays and he cries out and he says, Father, if there's any way, if there's any other way, let this cup pass. What cup? The cup of the suffering. The cup of the wrath that was to be poured out on you and I for our sin. The punishment for our sin that Jesus took upon Himself. He was about to taste that cup on the cross. He said, Father, if there's any other way, let's do it. But. Thank God He said, but. He said, but Thy will be done. Thy will be done. And though it says that angels came and ministered to him because he was in such grief that blood was pouring out of his forehead like sweat. He was in such anguish and such, you know how you get when you're, you're thinking about something and, and stressing about something and your, and your forehead gets wrinkled up and you're just kind of tense. And Jesus was so tense that Medically, they say that you can get so intense that the capillaries in your forehead can burst. And they bleed like crazy, evidently. That's what WWF guys know. They take razor blades and slice their forehead, and it's not a huge wound, but it gushes a lot of blood. And so his capillaries are bursting so that blood is dripping down his forehead like sweat. Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? I cry in the daytime, you do not hear in the night season. And I'm not silent. But why don't you, why do I feel so far from you, Lord? Father, why do I feel so far from you? It says that angels came and ministered to him. But there's nothing recorded in Scripture saying that And the father said, when he was baptized, there was a voice from heaven that came and said, hey, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Follow him. Came again on the Mount of Transfiguration. But we see no voice here. Because somehow, and I can't explain to you how, but the Scriptures clearly tell us somehow the fellowship between God the Father and God the Son was broken was broken. Jesus never stopped being God while He was on this earth. It's one of the foundational principles that the church established in the first century of understanding and has argued with in different places over over centuries. But Jesus was the God-man. Fully God, fully man. How does that work? I don't know. Sorry. You're going to have to get a smarter pastor than me. And good luck finding someone who can explain that. Philippians chapter 2 gives us an insight because it says, you should have the same attitude in you as was in Christ Jesus, who though being in very essence God, did not consider God keeping equality with God, keeping at that level of godliness something to be grasped, but instead set it aside and took on the form of a bondservant 
and became obedient. In another place it says he learned obedience. Because God doesn't have to be obedient to anyone. But Jesus learned experientially obedience. Because being God, he set his godly privileges aside, but never stopped being the person of God. Set all that aside so that while he was on the earth, his fellowship with the Father is the same fellowship that you and I can have. Did you know that? Because you see, he was full of the Holy Spirit. And if you are born again, you are full of the Holy Spirit. And his fellowship with God was a communication link through prayer. It says in the Scriptures that Jesus would get away. Get away from everybody and all the hustle and bustle. And he'd kind of sneak off. Sometimes he'd sneak off at night. He'd be gone all night in prayer, in fellowship, in communion with the Father. So that he could say, I'm not doing anything except what my Father tells me to do. These works are the works that my Father has told me to do. That's the kind of fellowship that we are called to have with God. This th sin thing really messes it up. And that's the one part that Jesus did not experience as He walked on this earth. He experienced the punishment for our sin. Our sin was put upon Him. But while He walked on this earth, He walked a sinless life. So He didn't have that barrier between He and the Father. And you know what? <laughs> Neither do you. Neither do you. That dividing between you and God has been torn apart in the very place, Matthew 27, the very next verse that I didn't read in the passage says, when Jesus died, the veil in the temple was rent in two from top to bottom. That place that nobody could go except the high priest once a year and pour out blood now was open to everybody. A tremendous truth that now you and I don't have to go through a priest. We don't have to go through this guy, that guy, me, anything else. Jesus, the one mediator between you and God. That's it. You go straight to the top. You don't have to go to his mom. You don't have to go to his friends. You go straight to Jesus. But that fellowship between the Son and Father was broken. When did that happen? When did that start? Did it start in the Garden of Gethsemane? Again, I don't know. I kind of think so, but I don't know. The Scripture doesn't tell us explicitly, so I guess we don't need to know. But the fellowship was broken. But look at verses 3 through 5. But you are holy. You see, in the first couple verses, it's my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is what's going on for me. But then verse 3, but you, but you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted you, delivered them. They cried to you. They were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. Here is this typical, and this is why I think this is definitely a Psalm of David, because it's it's got his style there going, you know. Hey, all this stuff's going on, but you, Lord. Oh, I'm feeling abandoned, but you. Sylvia, who's not here this morning, and Krista have been talking uh, lately and talking about that very thing, about we can focus on, you know, the, the things that are going on in our life and so forth. And if we stay there, we're going to be disappointed. We're going to be fearful. We're going to be depressed. And the two words to start with are, but God. But God. And that's what David here says. And that's what Jesus on the cross, that's what it says, for the joy set before Him, He endured the cross, despising the shame. For the joy set before Him. Hmm. <laughs> 